Date worthy. I'm taking a date here when I have one. Bye. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a very, very, very hit him with very, another very, one more very special episode of Fun Bros Food. We're outside of Bone Kettle in Pasadena right now, and Bone Kettle is doing some really cool things. Bone Broth is getting really popular from coast to coast. This spot is focusing on like Southeast Asian cuisines. This place has got rave reviews. People have been asking us to come here for quite some time, and I've been meaning to come here. I'm hungry, man. Bone Broth at, at Bone, Bone Kettle. Kettle. Entering the kitchen of Bone Kettle. Perhaps. You're one of the biggest Indonesian guys I know, man. You're a bodybuilder, right? No, 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 no. Oh, you're I not? Like to work out. So pretty much that's where we cook our broth. So right now we we only have our lobster stock going. We're not cooking broth until tonight because it's a little bit hot. Ooh, this is one of the more colorful freezers I've been in. <laughs> I, I gotta ask you about bone marrow. What's yeah. inside? Is it fat? Is it good for you? Bone marrow is one of the richest foods in the world. It tastes like you're just scooping in fat. A lot of people tend to drink this in the morning instead of drinking coffee. What if they throw bone marrow into coffee? They did that here in the coffee. Beef feet. Yeah, Can I touch it? Yeah. It's clean. A young male foot. Yes. It contains a lot of good collagen for good good for the skin, good for the hair. So that's pretty much our ingredient. And we just boil it for 38 hours and add a bunch of um, aromatic like carrots, ginger, celery. You can watch it. <laughs> oh did I just eat it? Was I not supposed no, no, to do that? <laughs> I just licked my finger. <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. We have I a feel like the Lost Boys. Oh, you mean in that scene where they're just the scene with all that food? Except instead of it being invisible and imaginary, it's actually right in front of yeah. us. Yeah. Dude, this is this is a crazy spread, and this is actually just the first half. What was it like when you wanted to do bone broth in LA when it's really hot and you're basically saying like, hey man, drink this soup? I think it's comfort food, you know? I think that's what LA is missing. Too much fine dining, too much like, you gotta wear a tie, suit, you know? I just wanna have a restaurant that like everybody could enjoy, like some comfort food, where uh -huh. you could just like grub and like, eat out. That's making an impact in a different way, and, and that's what I love about it. We'll talk it. more, yeah, but let's, let's start eating. What, what should we start with? I think you guys should start with some salads. For me. Over here we have our okay. confit salad, we have, over there we have our right. pie salad. So this is a duck confit salad. Yes. You have so much food for us, man. I, I wish we would've brought more people, man. We should've. <laughs> the reason why we put um, duck confit on our, our menu is because we eat a lot of duck in Indonesia, and that's pretty much our kind of like our diet, the duck and chicken, because okay. it's a Muslim country, so it's like mm -hmm. everything, kind of like a lot of halal food. Mm -hmm. So it's limited, you know, for to eat beef and, and meat. You gotta have money. I like that a lot. Yeah, I, I'm good. a big fan of duck myself. How do you make a healthy but tasty Indonesian food is not necessarily known for like being like Western style healthy? A lot of our produce are seasonal and not seasonal, you know, all year round. So why not utilize it? Cause food gotta be healthy. Look at him, bro. <laughs> Look at these traps and this, these shoulder muscles, man. What what was the concept behind this one, real quick? Well, this one is kind of like a Thai food. I love eating papaya salad. I go to like a lot of Thai restaurants, so why not make it my own, use my own recipe? I love that. That was so refreshing and that was super easy to eat. I try to make the dishes young people friendly too, so we cater to all yeah. the ages. I think it's oh, cool. Yeah, which one are you going with? I, I like them both. Okay. All right. I have to go with the duck salad, the duck comfy salad. Actually, this was one of my favorite papaya salads I've mm. had. What else? Now over here we have our, our famous chicken wings. Oh we brine this for a day with a bunch of um, herbs, lemongrass, orange, ginger. We eat a lot of fried chicken in our country. Yeah. That's like okay. our staple. No, in Indonesians eat a lot of fried chicken. That's yeah, true. Love fried yeah, chicken. Have, yeah, we have that to have true. our fried chicken in there. Yeah. What is that? Is that just a lime? It's, um, it's charred lime. We coat it with sugar and then we grill it. Ooh, yeah. Are you a flats guy or a drumette guy? I like flats. I'm a drumette person. I respect it, David. Yeah, kind of but like I the, don't I agree. The bicep and forearms. Oh, that's the oh. bicep forearms. Okay. Oh, that's funny. Kind of morbid, but it's funny. <laughs> No, that's really good. These wings kind of have like a stickiness to them. Yeah, it com comes what from is the, um, the sweet soy sauce. Mmm. Sorry, I had a drum and a wing, man. That was so good. All right, so far we're batting three for oh. three. That was fire. You know how good it is because like, usually on food videos, there would be like some leftover bites. Because like, we can't eat everything, but like, there's, there's really not that much left over. I'm trying to right pace now. myself, Yeah, but it's making it difficult. Even this drink, what is this drink here? We do have non-alcoholic, we do have uh, alcoholic, but we, we don't have um, alcohol in here. We only have um, beer and wine. Mm. 
but we mix it a lot with our soju and sake. Okay, soju and sake actually count legally as wine. Right. Yes. Oh my gosh. So we have, I think these are lavenders. We mix a little bit of soju, and then this is our raspberry. Good. I'm gonna take a sip. Okay, I think this is it's good to handle now, David. Okay. It's super hot coming out of the oven, though. You know what I thought was cool? That you didn't over-season it. Like, there's not too much sauce on this. Yeah, you kind of kept we, it kind of plain, right? Let the product speak by itself. All and right. we just add a little bit of sauce, and that's all. Hey, that, that's kind of like what, how people talk about steaks. <laughs> like, oh, don't put too much flavor on the steak. Oh my gosh. I kind of want to just eat it by itself. Super rich. That's why you need the salad, though. I gotta yeah. say, mm. I actually much prefer that to the truffle bone marrow. You know how oh, like, yeah. a lot of people do. Yeah, truffle. I think I think sometimes if it's rich already, you don't want to make it rich. It's wasting ingredients, especially like when truffle is such an expensive mushroom. Yeah, uh -huh. just keep it original. Keep it as, as flavor. Did you go to culinary school? Yes, I did. Okay, I was gonna yeah. say you talk. You sound like somebody went to culinary <laughs> school because let me tell you this: I've talked to a lot of chefs that were schooled and non-schooled, but that I, I noticed that at, from culinary school, everybody has a lot of reasoning behind everything. Yeah. Look at how it drips like that. It's almost like has its own like olive oil. My little bone marrow open sandwich right here. Mm. Wow. You guys really believe in the health benefits of bone marrow, right? Yes. Is it because of the collagen? It's the collagen, the uh, minerals, vitamins, and I, I feel like it has a really high protein. I know why you didn't pour the bone broth in in the beginning because if you had poured it in, then maybe yeah. the noodles would have got soggy. Okay. Yeah. I think we had bone marrow. There's oxtail sitting here. We had some, you know, chicken wings, but I feel like this David's still going in. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yo, Don't mind me. Well, look how milky that is. That bone broth has been cooked for 36 hours. So this is pretty unique to your restaurant. Yes. This, dish. this is like, so it's almost like Indonesian, Vietnamese, Selangtang, but with ramen noodles. Yes. Hey, okay. So I saw them before they brought this out, David. They put the bowls and the plates in the oven to keep them hot. You know, Andrew, when we first moved to LA eight or so years ago, there was no spots like this that existed. The closest thing to fusion was Noodle World. This is like definitely next level, man. This brisket is one of the best things that I've eaten in a really long time. I don't think I ever had oh. anything like that before. Oh ah. my gosh. David, this is, this is your piece right there. Bro. People say they like butt, but then all of a sudden when it comes to ox, they're like, no. For me, I think I was partial to the brisket. That brisket bone broth, here at Bone Kettle is a 10 out of 10. Bro. I just agree, I like the oxtail. I mean, no, I like both of them, but the oxtail to me was just like, oh man. Which one do you personally lean towards? I'm a brisket person, more than the oxtail, but I eat oxtail too. Our one side with I, me! I can't argue with the chef. What else should we try? Should we try these, these Yeah, this is, uh, this is our new dish. Um, over here, this is from um, Chef Donna. She created, which is kind of cool. It's a rainbow cauliflower. Right. I could see you to Western people, them maybe thinking this dish looks almost like art. Yeah. And well, it looks like art even to me. It could have easily been dressing or like yes. some ranch or something. Right. I'm gonna get every color of cauliflower here. I didn't even know that there was more than one color of cauliflower. To be honest, the food here looks like more like you think when you look at it visually. You almost think New York City versus Pasadena. I love the coconut. I thought that. It's different. different. Yeah, that's it's different. different. All right, the chili lobster. This is crazy because this uh, reminds me a lot of the uh, chili crab in Singapore that we had. Oh, just massive lobster pieces here oh at Bone Kettle. Gosh. Hey, BK lobster. doesn't stand for Burger King anymore. It's Bone Kettle. Mmm. Oh, man. Yo, that lobster is cooked perfectly, man. It's also a tiny. I tell you, I tell you. I like it. It's got a little bit of kick, too. Yeah, it's kind of spicy. spicy. Uh, just a little bit of sweat on your nose. That's good, that's what you want. And then you're gonna chase it with the drink. Yo, this is the charcoal tea We gotta try this. Oh, get the big old shrimp in there. You know what I love about this one? The scallion piece right there. Yeah. Mmm. That's Penang style charcoal tea. And last but not least, what, what is this? That's our pork sisi. Wow, that's good. Yeah, a lot of people just buy that and they order a side of rice. And then we just eat it mm. for like lunch. No, that's good. Mm. Hell yeah, man, this was delicious. Ooh. I gotta say, I was blown away. My favorite things I said, it was the beef brisket bone broth, obviously the uh, chili lobster, but yeah, everything was good. Though. All right, one more thing. One more dish? One more dish. One more dish? Yeah. 
Okay. You picked the oxtail. Yeah, the oxtail was fire. I was gonna say for me, my sleeper pick was the papaya salad. Okay. Because for me, pick. it just tasted so fresh, so clean. For me, my sleeper pick that I feel like, I really like the version here is the seasick. That's not my favorite dish, to be honest, but here it had a great mixture of sourness, freshness, spice. I gotta say that this has been absolutely one of the best restaurants that I've eaten at in a really, really long time. Take a date here. The drinks are good, the drinks are colorful. Girls are gonna like these drinks. I'm just like, just, just take a date here. There's a lot of great Indo spots, but man, this is like, this is very date worthy. Date worthy. I'm taking a date here when I have one. Bah. Bone Kettle here, right here in Pasadena, could be successful in New York City. I don't know in if they In fact, want somebody expand. from New York City needs to call Irwin, Irwin. With, a, with a good offer. Hey, yo, Irwin, I've been thinking about putting the Bone Kettle in uh, Astoria. What do you think? <laughs> hey, Donnie, they need a Bone Kettle in East Village. So we are looking at a <laughs> Ube Pandan Waffle. I love it because the purple and green, one, it's a really cool colorway, two, I love how you use ube and pandan. Those are two things that are very Southeast Asian that are making their way into the Asian dessert game pretty heavy now. They just take the wedges out like a like a cake. Yeah. Breaking that cake. Wow. Oh, oh. The waffle is warm. I can feel it. It's melting the ice cream. Oh, this is amazing. Wow. I know I got it all over my face. You don't have to tell me. I can tell that there's so many steps and iterations and versions it took to get to this point. It's sort of like Android. The, the phone. The food is just high quality, and you know it's coming from a true, like, Asian spark, you know, and, and that's what I appreciate, you know, and you can call it fusion, but if it's fused with other Asian stuff, I don't know, like, When you, you know? put sriracha on your pizza, is that fusion, or is it just your kitchen? <laughs> you know what it is? It's just your kitchen. It's delicious. That's what it is. As cool it is, as it is to open up an Asian restaurant up here and just serve other Asian people, Ultimately, you're not really impacting the community and you're not really changing people's worldviews. And I think with a restaurant like this, you are. Changing the world one plate world, at a time. Dude, what's the best piece of advice you can give to the young kids out there who are like, man, that looks cool. Like what you guys did, where you guys get to represent your culture but make the spot modernized. First of all, you need to have a goal. What you wanna do. Mistake is gonna happen, but you just have to kinda stick to it and you're gonna reach your goal, for sure. You guys, this beautiful spread started as a food truck. You guys, thank you so much for joining us on this very, very special episode of Fun Bros Food. I don't know, it was special. It was so good. And we were looking forward to this episode so much because we had looked at this restaurant and talked about it amongst ourselves. It did not disappoint, man. And just overall, guys, if you are looking for any interesting restaurant in this area, this Southeast Asian kitchen, got it. Asian guys, you need more spots to feel comfortable at and take a date. This is it. I think you can take anybody here. Thank you so much for watching that video. Shout out to Eric and Erwin from Bone Kettle and shout out to the team back here. Um, in the comments below,